Hey. Yes, you absolutely did. Hey, everybody, welcome to SketchUp Live. It's Friday, it's SketchUp Live day, and today we got a great model for you. Eric, you see him right here. He's gonna be walking us through a model in Denmark, and uh, oh, hot dog, we got a lot of good tricks uh, and tips up his sleeve. And thanks everybody uh, for joining us in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, hey, why don't we just get into it? Uh, without further ado, here's your host for today, Eric Sargent. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Matt. You know, the applause, the crowd goes wild. All right. How are you I'm doing gonna, today, Eric? Good. I'm going to do my usual um, audio check because you never know. I know I sound good. I know I look good on my screen, but I want to make sure that it's like Vidal Sassoon, right? If I don't look good, if we don't look good, you don't look good. Wait, I don't, I don't know. That's an old commercial from a long time ago. That dates me. Oh, no, you look at it. I'm going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. All right. You're going to like the way you um, look. <laughs> But no, no, I like that. It's a cool t-shirt you got on as well. So thanks. I usually wear solid yeah. black. So the fact I'm wearing um, any graphic at all uh, is a special occasion. It's a special occasion because uh, I, I was I was fortunate enough for those that some of you know this and some of you don't. Most of you don't that uh, it was sort of a half work trip, half not work trip. But there's some developers, uh, SketchUp extension developers, and I'll tell the story in a little bit more detail. But um, they're mostly European. So when they meet up, they meet up in Europe and they were having this kind of a, what's called top camp by uh, this sort of, uh, by the Holygon folks. For those who went to base camp, you might've met Anders and Felix of Holygon and they're based out of Sweden, Lund, Sweden. And they, they host this thing in a year. They get some developers together and they talk SketchUp, obviously. Um, they talk extensions, they talk programming, a lot of stuff like C++ and what happens when you wrap it and what, uh, a lot of stuff that went right over my head. But it was really, really cool not only to see these, meet some of these people in person. Speaking of which, the, the, the elusive Fredo, I hope he doesn't mind that I name drop him. Uh, Fredo Six was there, and I got to meet. Wow. I got to shake the the legend's hand, and and uh, uh, so anyway, I'm. Uh, it's like meeting uh, for those of you that are into music, and you get to meet someone like Radiohead. You know, like uh, for me, I get to meet the developers of Lindelay, which is Scatter and Transmuter and Fredo. So, so that's the inspiration. Yeah. The, Super awesome time, and more than anything, I took away what I already kind of knew, which is the architecture and urban design over there is different than it is over here. And um, in a lot of ways, uh, I'm going to say it, United States, guys, Europe, you do things better urban design-wise, transit-wise, you better. Not better, not better, uh, like, blanket, but like, in, and you'll see when I explain when I show you the um, the project site. But So, yeah, Matt, any, um, any shout-outs or any announcements, anything I missed before we just kind of transition into, before I shrink myself? Uh, yeah, well, one thing was that uh, thanks for everybody who voted in the poll. If you oh, aren't right. following us on social Thank media you. or on the forum, um, the forum thread is in the link uh, in the description. But we had a, uh, a poll to see, Eric, you uh, had a couple different cool projects that you, uh, that you witnessed or that you liked from the area. And then we put them up for a poll for you to decide on. And then we amalgamated all of our different uh, uh, polling resources from across the forum and YouTube. The one that won was Mountain Dwellings, which maybe you could have already guessed from the uh, from uh, the image right behind Eric. But uh, so that's what Eric's going to be modeling today. So thanks for uh, joining in on the poll and letting your voice be heard. But uh, yeah, let us know if there's any other models that you want to see us take on in the future. Um, and yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit about the other ones that uh, yeah. came in a close second and third place. Thank you for reminding me, Matt, because that was so that was critical. Um, so one thing that that I was mentioning was just the how cool the architecture and urban design is. So I I got the privilege of being able to go see something that I've wanted to for a very very long time, and this is in a town called Aarhus. It's two A's, which is we don't have that letter in our al alphabet, so it's sort of pronounced Aarhus. If I'm for my Danish friends out there, if I mess that up, I'm sorry. Um, Sounds good to my ear. Yeah. Okay. So this is an, um, and I'll try to be quick here because I know you guys all want to see me model, but the, but this is why we did this competition because we didn't know or this poll because I, I couldn't choose to be honest with you. I mean, I had about 20, and I narrowed it down to three, and then I said, you guys tell me what you want to see. This is the most amazing thing I think I've seen in my life. It's called Your Rainbow Journey by Olafur Eliasson. He's an artist, and it's on top of an art museum. And you go into this, you go up the stairs here, and you go into this rainbow 
perfect circle and each pane of glass is colored. And I thought this could be fun to do in SketchUp. It's a little bit architecture, a little bit landscape architecture, little ra little rainbow. And I think, is it Pride Month? I should know this. I think it is. So I thought. Yeah, it, it is. You're so right. Yep. So there you go. I mean, that would have been fun. Uh, absolutely stunning and amazing. This is what it looks like when you're in there. And as you walk through the, as you walk through it, it changes, it changes color. I mean, it feels like, like this is unreal, but that is how it, um, <clears throat> that was the design intention. I thought that would be fun. Maybe render in V-Ray. It looks like an incredible experience. It's hard to like capture it in one image. I feel like no, the, you the image to... that we put up doesn't do it justice because no, you, have... you know, obviously being inside is looks so oh, wild. I'm going to shrink myself. Sorry, I'm, I'm like, my head is totally blocking the thing. I'm going to shrink. All right. Sorry, I, I want to do this. Shoot. I want to do this justice. So when you stand there, you know, the, yeah, exactly. So this one, you know, keep that in mind for future live models. I want to come back to this one. I thought that was really fun. Now the mm -hmm. next one was um, Bjarke Ingels. So big for those of you that are familiar with big, which is um, he's from Copenhagen, um, and uh, now he's blown up and big. But this was his first. Get it? Big is big now. Um, there you go. This is his. <laughs> <laughs> this is his first project, and it's the Maritime Youth House. And it was just really, really interesting because as a landscape designer, I'm I'm really impressed by the idea that is it landscape or is it architecture? I don't really know. It's both because the roof in this case, it folds. And so the roof becomes the ground, and it really is both um, landscape and architecture at the same time. And he did this for a reason. He did it because the soil, it's an industrial site, it's contaminated. So in sort of, instead oh. of re remediating the site, they they built a deck above it, and they lifted your, above the part. So they only had to re remediate a portion of the site, and that saved cost. So again, this is now a design solution that is awesome, but it was done out of a practical reason, which is I can't afford to remediate the site. So. Really, really, really cool. Now, my friend Mihai, if you guys follow in the forums, he's from Poland and he was at base camp this year. Mihai already tried to model this one because he was following the forum polls and this one was leading in the forums. So for to my forum users, I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to do this one too, but YouTube, YouTube votes came in and I'm gonna show you one more picture. You can see it on my screen. I just wanna show you the picture that I took just to show you that I was there. And this is, called Mountain Dwellings, and um, I just call it the mountain. And it is a parking structure that, um, um, some residents that sit on top of a parking structure, and you can see it's a very different way to approach a classic problem of how do you fit a crap ton, excuse my language, parking <laughs> on a small site and still have a beautiful building and places for people. And this was a really, again, a clever, um, a clever solution. So. I, that's yeah that's where we're at this one won what was the tally matt did you say what the final vote count was or not does it matter uh at the last it was like 160 something to uh 60 was the second place and then i think the third place was around like 30 votes so uh pretty strong showing especially on youtube for the mountain dwellings which i from the image that we put up again it doesn't really do it justice you see it from that kind of the the other side where it's like that that mountain kind of mural looking thing that's like covering up the parking structure but uh, not, <laughs> it's so much cooler when I went into the, uh, I like looked it up and went into more detail on it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is like way cooler than I originally thought. So I could see why you guys chose this one because it's, uh, it's, it's impressive for sure. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you two things and then I'm going to get into it. I'm going to stop talking because I know we're all just wanting, because I'm going to need as much time as possible. But what I want to <laughs> do is show you um, a couple of things, which is one is the inspiration for how, again, how, um, how this came about, which is that... Um, I think there was one more diagram that shows this one here. So these are two diagrams and uh, and SketchUp um, is actually, I mean, this I don't know if this is SketchUp or not, but that doesn't matter. But these are the kind of diagrams that I actually love to make in SketchUp. So the one on the left here, if you go from number one to number eight, number one, uh, again, here's the bi apartment building and here's the parking. This is how we would normally just solve the problem, just traditionally. And they mm -hmm. said, well, what if we stacked them? And if we did that, we could get more, you know, this is, uh, we can get more parking on one side and less on another. That creates sort of an interesting building. And then, um, and we articulate the edge so that it sort of responds to the building next to it, which is, um, has that sort of zigzag. And then sort of that creates a ramp on the inside. So the parking structure is a series of terraces, which is, which you'll see in just a second. And then from there, you have the rooftop units that sort of get carved out. They almost get carved away. Like you would carve like a quarry like out of the mountain. So the metaphor is actually kind of appropriate. You almost get this sort of jagged rock uh, looking thing. I think that helps for context. The reason why is because it's gonna be hard for me to model. And I think when you see um, 
I don't know. I won't say that it will be hard for me to model. It'll be an interesting challenge. We'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, no, I believe in you. You can do it. Yeah, I love those it. kind of diagrams too. They're so cool to show the, the thought process behind it. Here we are in the world for anyone who doesn't know. Again, just Copenhagen. And then it's actually not in Copenhagen proper. It's in this, um, uh, this is a relatively new suburb called Orsted, right? Um, and then there's some really, um, there's another BRK building, which is called Eight House. And I did not let you vote for that one because I was, that one was going to be way too complex. So I said, let's not even let you run that one. So if you follow, if you go up from Eight House and you follow the transit line, um, you get to, you get to Mountain, which is right here. And um, let me just kind of tilt just for a second, because Matt, you, you made a good point is that you can't, it's really, really interesting because it has two sides. It has the street side, which is actually a parking lot, technically a parking lot. Uh, you get the street side, which is this um, sort of stacked building approach. And then you get this, and I'm, I got a little too close there. You can't really see it from that angle. But then if you come over on this side, you get this, you get the other side, which is you get the residential side, which is the garden, almost like a forest. And it's mm -hmm. so completely different. The one building if it has two, it, it looks like you have no idea that this is the same building. You have no idea that you're in the same place. And, uh, but then again, it's classic Bjarke with his, you know, um, a polished aluminum or stainless steel panels. So I think that's all I want to say, but I will have this. I'm going to keep this in uh, Google Maps up here for reference because I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm going to need to <laughs> sort of pop around and I'm, again, I need to give myself more credit. I have a little tiny idea of what I'm doing and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to have to kind of spin around and, and like just kind of guess it. Well, that looks to be about, that's kind of the game we're going to play today. So with ado, uh, with uh, out further ado, let's set. That's the, right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Good. Let's Beautiful. do it. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. Yeah, I, now, hop in. now I, I like to start from scratch in these streams, but I'm going to tell you why I'm not doing that. And I wanted to say this because for our loyal um, listeners and viewers out there, um, uh, if I skip steps, I like to explain why I skip steps. If I sh shortcut the process. And the reason why is because there are 11 floors, which means there are 11 plans which need to be imported, scaled, um, placed on top of each other, and then set at the right height and then tagged. Now, I might be able to spend about half of our time together doing that, but I do want to show you one trick is if I was starting from scratch, for example, if I pull my, my floor plans up, there are... Um, 11 of them. And the reason why is because in Europe, they call not always, but I think in, in this case, they call the ground floor, they call it ground level, and they start level one, what we would call level two. So what right, there's a great extension for those of you that don't know this, um, it's called import all from folder. And that's from TIG. So if I click on that, and then it, and then what I do is I just basically click that folder plans. And I have all my plans in there, I just click actually, I have to back up one, I think, I think I have to click plans. Um, oh, and I just select one image and click open. And what it's going to do is if I zoom out, if this, if I did it right, it opens all of them. Oh, now, wow. That's cool. Now that's cool. Now let me tell you why I learned this because I was doing a, I was helping my wife. She works for an art museum and, um, they, we were doing an art gallery and I had about 150 children's drawings to place on the walls. And I was like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, importing 150 drawings, which is going to kill me. So I use, I learned that this, this extension exists so I could import all of them at once. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, yeah. So make the computer do the work for you. All the boring, you know, repetitive stuff. That's yeah. Good, right. Uh, Isn't that what we're trying to automate? To so I can get to the creative stuff. Now, only problem here is you'll see that if the images are different resolutions, they're going to import at their native resolution. So just tip pro mm -hmm. tip is that if you want them all to come in at the same size, and that'll make it easier for scaling, like you can see one of them is not the same size, you'd want to make sure you check the resolution first before you import them. Otherwise, you got to come in here and then you got to say, oh, I got to scale or I'm going to go set this to group and then set it as group and go in and use my tape measure. Okay, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. Cool. Where'd you get these images, by the way? Oh, just online. I mean, they have them. Um, I don't even know where. You just search for them. A lot of the architectural websites, like when they show the image, a lot of times they show the floor plans because we like to geek out. Us architects like to geek out. Oh, totally. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm going today. I'm going to lump myself into that category. But you're also going to hear me apologize to architects because I'm not one. So I'm going to say, well, I don't know how they would do it, but this is how I'm going to do it. So one, hey, that works for me. one other thing um, I want to point out before I get going is that you'll notice that this is a little bit challenging if I'm just modeling from the geo location is that it's rotated. So we're north is no long north is up, but we're no longer um, sort of oriented or what I would call 
axis oriented. So being the axis is being north up. So in this case, um, I would want to start by rotating, not the geolocation, but I would rotate the, uh, I would actually create a new axis. I would say place axis. And then I thought about this and I said, well, that's cool because now when I draw over this, um, I can draw over it pretty easily to kind of get that shape. But then I looked at these units and I thought, wait a minute, these units are at a different axis. So now I've got three axes, which is, which is the original one, which is north up. The rotated one, which is going to help me draw just sort of the outer perimeter and the context. And then the units, I rotated it one more time. So now we have three axes that I can switch back and forth on. So yeah, and those are saved to scene. So you still, it's all the same geometry. It's the same model. It's yep. just you're switching the axis for yep. each scene. Yep, exactly. So I, this is why this is why I didn't want to have you watch me do this because it'd be kind of boring, but I want to explain why I did it this way. Um, so that way I can switch back and forth between the three axes. Now I have some stuff over here for reference. I have all the floor plans um, from ground floor all the way to 10, um, just off to the side. Now I've already placed them. I've already scaled them and placed them. So you don't have to watch me do that. And I also grabbed this image. And the reason why is because I was trying to figure out the colors because something that's really special about this is the fact that there's an air gap between the bottom of the, of the residential units and the, what would be the top of the parking structure. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. It's 11 floors, but remember we're looking at the bottom side. So you're not going to see the ground floor and you don't see the penthouse level. There's nine colors, in which case I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't know why I have eight because when I count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I don't know what that one last one is. That might be green or that might not be a color. I can't see it. So I'm going to go with what I'm going to go with what I can see. And you know what? I might not even get to color. We'll see. If I stop talking, then maybe I'll actually get get going. <laughs> Um, the last thing that I did was I set up the floor plans. So if you look at my tag structure, I have all floor plans placed and I have, again, I'm going to, this is where I'll apologize not being an architect. I have no idea. I have, I have 11 floor plans and I have a section cut <laughs> and I've just placed them on top of each other. I'm in x-ray mode right now. So if it's difficult for you to see, that's why. Um, so they're all placed there. The floor to floor height is going to be if you uh based on the section cut i wanted to say 3.5 meters but i'm using 3.25 and the reason why is because that's what the section cut shows um and i am for this for my european friends out there we are modeling in metric because because this building is in copenhagen and that's what they use so we're going to be using meters um today right metric yes, metric metric that deserves a round of applause thank you I'm just saying that, you know, they, they're always commenting like, oh, you know, can you do some metric? And they don't talk like that. That's what I think. That's how I think they sound. <laughs> this is you. This no, is you. Yeah, is no, your. that's can great. Can you do this in metric, please? Yes, yes, yes. We'll do this in metric. So now the other thing I did is I, <laughs> I created a um, series of tags, one for each floor plan. Uh, but what I did was I disabled camera location and I disabled styles. So if you look at my scenes, you'll see that I disabled camera location, styles, and axis. And I did that for a reason, and I'll tell you why. If I want to draw the outer building, I'll start with the outer tag, and then I'll go to level three. And you can see that now I'm oriented to the way the outer building is rotated, and I'm on level three. Now, if I want to draw a unit on level three, I'll click unit rotated and level three. And you can see what it's doing. Now, if I want to change the style, I switch from x-ray to monochrome. Now, there's nothing there. There's no... Um, there's no geometry, but once I have geometry, I like to switch out of X-ray and view it in monochrome, or not monochrome, hidden line. I put MC, but I meant um, HL. I'm gonna change that because, you know, that's good good practice, good good standards. Yeah, so, if you're gonna so, have it named, I might as well have it named right. Yeah, I might as well right. do this right. So, the, so that's gonna be cool. So now I can switch basically between, I can switch between orientation and floor plan in two clicks. And that's way faster than going into either the tags menu or the styles menu or the scenes menu. So the power of scenes and tags shows itself here in organization, not as an individual, mm -hmm. not using individually, but in organization. And I think this is, um, I hope this helps the process go a little bit smoother. So if I'm ready to draw on level 10, I just click on unit rotated. So I'm ready to draw level 10 units and I click to level 10 and you can see there I am, I'm on level 10. And if I wanna switch for any reason back to level eight, you can see I'm dropping the floor plans are dropping as I go. So I think I'm being smart here, but we're going to find out if I'm right or wrong um, once we're done. Beautiful. Let's do it. All right. Thanks. Okay. Any comments um, or questions before we go? Otherwise, we're, we're going for it. We're doing it. Yeah. People loving the metric. 
Love and metric. Okay. Um, all right, let's do this. So where to start? Uh, that's that's see that's funny. I spent all the time thinking about how to set this thing up, and I spent no time thinking about how to draw it. By the way, so this is <laughs> this is the part that I was worried about. I was hoping that I could just spend two hours talking about architecture and and urban design in in Copenhagen, but you can I'll, talk and model at the same time, right? Not as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about dimensions at this point. I mean, I think I think I should be, but I'm just going to go for it. You'll see that there's some things like you'll see that there's some things that like it looks like it kinks here, but how far is that kink? I don't know. Like I'm just going to go ahead and just just keep things moving a little bit quicker. I'm just going to kind of guess it. There are some times where I'm going to be more accurate, but I think there's other times where I'm just going to say, let's just let's just call that good. Yeah, a good mix. This is SketchUp Live. It doesn't have to be uh, uh -oh. See what constructed I did there? from this model. I snapped to my section. Boo. I'm going to see if Enroth <laughs> can save me here. Extensions, Enroth, flatten to plane. Enroth, are you my hero again? Heroine? Yes, you are. Enroth, this is why meeting your heroes is so awesome because it's like, dude, you, or gal, you saved my life. You saved my life. Okay. Yeah, 100%. So that's the shell. Um, I'm going to use Enroth again. Extensions, Enroth face creator. So um, as long as I know that I'm planar, I can face create. Um, and then the second thing I want to do is I'm going to leave that for now. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to like pull the volume up and go up. So if I switch again, if I switch off of x-ray to my hidden line style, you can see um, pretty easily where we're at here. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it makes sense to do that yet. The problem is, is because I think I almost want to wrap it afterwards. I almost feel like I want to build the units and then sort of wrap the shell because it'll, because I really don't want to do the parking garage, to be honest with you. I'm going to just pretend like the parking ramps and stuff are not part of this project. That's the boring part anyway. You know what? It's my project. I can do whatever. It's my birthday. Wait, it's my party. I can cry if I want to. <laughs> it's my live stream. I can ignore parking if I want to. 100%. I'm on board. I got, I got your back if anybody's uh, complaining that they want to see all the parking spots. Okay. Thanks, Matt. You know, think of the cars. Think of the cars. What would Lightning McQueen do? So you here. Know, you would model the cars first. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, don't, don't be sorry. You can cut me off um, all, as much as you want. The. That's the thing about Denmark is that they're really bike friendly. So it's funny that like this is a really big parking project and yet, or has a really um, interesting parking garage and yet, really, you know, their bicycle, they've got bicycle super highways. They've got bicycle, they've got full on bicycle parking garages. They've got all kinds of stuff that is just bike friendly. Anyone from Copenhagen with us or nearby? Scandinavian, Sweden? Anybody? I know, uh, Mihai, um, Mihai, are you, I thought I saw you say hi. If you're, if you're there, say hi again, because I want everyone to say hi to my friend. Say hi to Mihai, um, because he did such a great job trying to help me model um, Maritime Youth House. I feel like he needs a shout out. Yeah, he's in the chat. So he's yeah, chat. thanks okay. for joining. And yeah, uh, if anybody hasn't, check out the forum thread. It's in the description. Um, you can see some screenshots of that model. So All right. good job, Mihai. Yeah, good job, Mihai. Thank you for, for doing that. Okay, so what I want to do is um, I actually want to probably, I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm going to work backwards here. I'm going to, I'm gonna, as I go, I think I'm going to turn the section off because you saw I snapped to a section accidentally. And so I think what I'm going to do is just freeze that for now. And then when I need it, I'll bring it in. Um, so that's probably better than just leaving it on because I was already snapping to it. So when I trace over things, I, what I do is I'll usually just pull a dimension. And then I'll look at the measurements box and it says 14.79 by 4. And I have to decide whether I want to go up to 15 because I like round numbers. But remember, we're in meters, not feet. So if it was feet, I would go up to 15. But with meters, I would go down to 14.75. And what was that other number? By 8? 4. By 4? By 4. Okay. And what that does is it gives me, it's not perfect, but that's what, not what I'm looking for. I'm, I just want to work in sort of nice round numbers. I feel like that's good. That's good um, practices. So. If I'm a little slower because I'm actually measuring things, that's why. So in this case, I would look at the numbers and I'd go 7, 7.1. So I've decided if I want to go up 7.25 by 5.75, 7.25 by 5.75. And the other thing I have here is, um, and you're going to see, you're going to need this. I'm going to need this. It's this. It's my calculator. And what it does is if I type in if for those 5.25 meters, so for those in back home here in the States with me, I can just convert that to meters to feet. And it's going to tell you that that's plus or minus 17 feet. So. 
Oh, that's a handy trick. Yep. So that's, um, and I'm not naming any components or anything like that, but what I might do is once I've drawn one, um, I might copy it and then just um, instead of, and then just make this unique. Because I think that way it's still a component, but then I get to just, I just get to um, kind of, I don't know. I just get to figure this out. How do I want to do this? See, so you'd leave it a component in case there's another. Yeah, in case, because uh, this is C1 and C1 might repeat. It, it probably won't because this is the ground floor and I think these are special units. I stood right here and these decks are ginormous and I think that these are like almost like ground floor penthouse units. So it may not repeat, but at this point it's easier to make it a, a group later um, than it is to what would be the opposite of making, right? It's easier to, to take make a component a group than the other way around. Makes sense. I don't know. See, I can't talk and model at the same time, Matt. This is why when you said, can you do that? And I said, I don't know. I'm not sure if I can. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take on the talking then, and you can uh, you can just go silent. Uh, just turn on some music in your headphones and vibe out. Are you like a music guy when you uh, when you work on models? Do you listen to music? Do you listen to podcasts? Do you just go in silence? Or what's your... Oh, always, always music. Yeah, we had that conversation. I can't not. I don't know if it was you and I. It was. Um, it came up in one of the live streams, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, yeah." There's an artist. Actually, I think he's he's a European DJ. His name's Cocolino Deep. That's his DJ name, and he does these YouTube videos, and they're like hour long mixes inspired by movies. And because I'm a movie guy, I, I like um, I like his work. So shout out. Cool. Yeah, this is kind of the less fun part for, for the viewers. So this is where it's like you guys get to just, especially if you're in the UK or whatever, you just have some beers and just have a conversation and chat with each other. Um, because I, I need I need a certain amount of geometry um, before I can extrude. And mm -hmm. I'm going to push this over. I'm going to go with 0.5. Okay. So now if I wanted to, uh, there we go. So if I wanted to extrude these units, um, I could now. Now I have everything I need. So I'm going to go ahead and just group this. Whoops. This is kind of the tricky part because I need to make sure that, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to group. I'm going to just treat this as one volume right now because it's going to be the same height. But technically, it's property line. And this is your unit. This is yours. But just to keep things moving quick, I'm just going to group this. And I'm going to group it because this is, I'm not going to bother component because this is clearly unique. This is not going to repeat anywhere. I want to come up 0.5. So 0.5 meters, by the way, we use for, uh, which is going to be approximately three feet, which is good for like guardrail height. So I'm just going to use 0.5 for, to stand in for my um, three feet. And then for the unit height, we already know that I'm going to go 3.25. I'm going to ignore the floor volume right now because I can take the finish, I could take the actual floor thickness and I can actually run that through the unit if I wanted to, or we can, um, so right now I'm just going to pretend that there's no actual like floor ceiling thickness and I'll, I'll, I'll put that inside the unit rather than putting it outside the unit. So again, for my architect friends, um, sorry for butchering your, your craft, but then again, you know what, here's my thing is I'm going to, it's payback. Cause you know how many times people call landscape architects, they call us landscapers and I have to tell them if Tyson's <laughs> listening out there, he's laughing because he, he, he knows that he can get my goat by saying, Hey Eric, how's the landscaper industry doing? And I'm like, <laughs> landscapers are the guys no offense it's, they're the guys who maintain the gardens they're not the ones who build these who do build the, the buildings yeah very important job as well but uh, different yes yeah, exactly important. yeah exactly it's a different job um it's totally important and again no disrespect it's just it's not the same thing that's all that's all i'm trying to say uh we have people in the chat talking uh christopher he's lives in how do you pronounce this arhus arhus okay arhus arhus it's, it's like an o it's almost like an o Ar Who's, who's. So I'm okay. butchering that, but I think I hope I'm getting close. And he's saying that the parking space is really cool because I, I saw this on one of the uh, articles that I was reading about this place is that the elevator in the parking structure, because it's like a bunch of ramps going back and forth, right? Is like um, it's an angled elevator. Like it doesn't go straight up and down. It goes kind of at a slant almost. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. I have a bug um, and I shouldn't have done that. There's a, I, there's a glitch on my, on my, on my machine. It's a, um, Sorry to interrupt, Matt. Uh, no, no. It's uh, it's it's it has to do with my component library, and I've I've tried to figure out what's causing that, and I haven't. So that's not. I hate I hate when that happens, but um, you know, it happens sometimes. I don't know what it is. It's, it has to do with my component library right now. So, anyway, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just I just had to. I'm not going to place. I can't place stuff from my component library for for right for right this minute. 
Okay, right on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the, Randy is. Go ahead. No, no. You were talking about the elevator, which is it's like a almost like a funicular. It goes up at a, it goes up at an angle. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and Randy also says that uh, 0. 0.5 meters is closer to one and a half feet. 0. 0.5 is closer. meter being about. Oh, sorry. Just you're right. You're right. No, no, no. You're, no, thank you, Randy. I totally misspoke. See, I can't talk and model at the same time. I meant to say one meter. Um, not 0.5. So when I said 0.5, that was totally a slip of the tongue. You're, thank you. I'm going to fix that. And that's why this was looking kind of off to me. I was like, this looks low. I want to come back up 0.5. I'm going to check my measurement and that should be one. And that should be, and let's do them. Let's do this proper. So if I come over here to my calculator and I go one meter and we convert this, just if you don't know, uh, 3.2 and that's perfect. And like, cause that's, that's exactly what we want. So thank you, Randy. Uh, shout out. Yeah. Cheers. All right. That is, that gets us, hey, that's one floor down. That was easy because that was only three units. Um, so now I get to, um, I have to decide one thing. You guys have to help me out. I can decide whether or not I want to, I don't want to do this. Actually, I'm going to put, a, I'm going to create a new tag and I'm going to call this architecture um, or I can call this buildings or I can call this whatever I want and call this buildings. And then what I want to do is I want to assign um, everything that I've built once I build it. Um, unlock. Hang on, give me a second. That's the section cut. There we go. Okay, so then what I want to do is once I build something, I'm just going to go ahead and assign it to my buildings tag. And the reason for doing that is that way, if I want to, if for some reason it's in my way, I can just come up here and turn that off. And then that way, when I come up here to my L1, so if I go to um, unit rotated, L1, and then if I want to turn buildings off, then that way I'm starting, um, I'm starting from scratch again, and I'm ready to start. You can see I'm ready to start on the next level up. So here we go. Nice. Leveling up. Leveling, Leveling up. up your game. Now, let's. speaking of, the, of which, of components, let's see if these... I'm going to grab one of these, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to turn my buildings tag off. I'm going to place that in place, move it up 3.5. Sorry that I... Um, Well, sorry, not sorry. I, I I have to like say what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Like when I when I do stuff, I don't know if ever if, if that bugs people, but so I said sorry. No, talk it out. I have to like say if I'm gonna move something up, and then I have to like actually say it. Okay. No, please do. Um, we had one question about hey, the uh, the tag names it and fits. what does the S mean in your prefix for your tags? Yeah, I always explain that because I have to, because um, my experience with working with CAD files is that they come in with prefixes. So if you're working with um, subconsultants, L for landscape, um, A for architecture, um, sometimes MEP or U for utilities, often X will have a prefix for things that like maybe are supposed to be hidden or, or, or meant for referencing. Um, mm -hmm. So what I found is, is that when I model in SketchUp, when it was layers, but now it's tags, when you create a tag like buildings, now all of a sudden it's between A and L, but then you create a tag for structures and now it's between L and MEP um, or it's between L and utilities. So what, mm -hmm. what it does is my SketchUp layers end up becoming now tags because I, I learned to do this when it was layers. My SketchUp tags, um, I should be able to talk in them all at the same time, but I can't. The SketchUp tags place them all in the same place. So the S stands for SketchUp, and it means that everything, that means that my CAD stuff can be on CAD, my, my reference layers can be on reference layers, my CAD stuff can be on its own CAD layers, and then my SketchUp stuff stays on SketchUp stuff. So that's why. Nice, keep it in alphabetical. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought uh, I was being- Trading models back and forth. I thought I was being smart about it, but you know, you never know. Okay, make unique. S for smart. S for smart, S, you know what it is? Sergeant, it's my last name. That's, ah. that's better, <laughs> it's a better story. Yep. S for super. For Superman. Okay. Super. When you wear a Superman shirt, do you tell people it stands for Sergeant? Do you own a Superman shirt? I don't. You don't seem like a guy who would. Maybe a black and white no, one. No, we started this conversation with the fact that I don't own. I only own black T-shirts because I've been chipping away. As soon as a shirt gets old um, or gets red, like gets a hole in it, I just toss it and then I just replace it with the black one. So. Um, this one here, this one here, the story here is this is an artist, um, an Indonesian artist who designs beer cans at my local brewery. And sure. the, the company, the beer brewery is called There Does Not Exist, which is a funny name for a brewery. Um, and they don't have, they don't put names, they don't put words on anything. It's just, everything is just done by line work. And I just thought that's really bold. That's kind of brave. 
So that's why. Yeah, that's cool. So that's why I got this shirt because I was like, yeah, I do like the black, but at the same time, um, I don't know. I like I like art. I like cool art too. Yeah, and a good shirt with a story behind it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's cool. I like it. The only other shirt that I like are, of course, base camp shirts. If anyone's got those, if anyone went to base camp. So anyone out there yeah. know, know a faster way to do what I'm doing? Um, I'm open. I'm totally open to learning here, just as with along with you guys, with with everyone at home, because um, I I I just I am I have no idea how to do this. And I told Aaron that too. I was like, dude, I want I want to ask him. I said, how would you do this? I have no idea. Are they uh, are the units all stacked on top of each other? They are. So like if I just kind of just really quick turn my buildings tag on and turn my hidden line style, you can see that they're they're starting to go up like this. Um, oh, but they they're are. not like exactly on top of each other. No, but that could be because of the placement of my floor plans. So like um, um, I don't know if like they literally, I mean, they are stacked on top of each other, but I assume that this line yeah. should line up. But when I put my floor plans in, like there was no way to know that every single, cause they're all from JPEG images, not CAD files. So there's no way mm -hmm. to snap them exactly. So if I wanted to come back in later and just ship them and nudge them, I can, but I'm gonna go, I wanna keep going because we're already at 37 minutes in, so. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if you could do like, you model the middle floor, all the units, right? And then you just extrude them up and down all the way and then just like intersect with a bunch of planes at each level. But it looks like they're not like really mm. lined up that way. Yeah, you know, again, that's just why it's like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. This is why. I mean, I think that's what makes the the building so interesting is that it it kind of has this repetition, but it also has you know, um, uh, a uniqueness to it too. Everything, you know, it looks. Um, oh, hang on. There we go. I want my trace style. Um, yeah, exactly. It kind of feels like, like it is the same. It is a modular kind of thing, but at the mm -hmm. same time it is, and this is the trick here is that, and I think this is where I probably could come in here and push this up and I'll, I'll tell you why, uh, I'll tell you why I might want to do that for right now. Um, and then assign that to its own tag and just going to call this, I'm just going to call this volume for right now because I don't know what else to call it. Um, and then, and I'll show you why, because I don't actually want that on there. I, what I want to do is just come over here. And if I say, um, if I'm working on this module, I could select this whole thing and say intersect faces with model. And you can see what it did right there to see how it just sliced. It intersected with the volume. So then I can mm -hmm. right select, um, right select so that I only get that extra piece. Or I could just push pull it and just get rid of that. I think that was a smart yeah, see, there we go, kind of figuring it out. And then if I want to just turn that volume off, I can turn that volume off. That Because what I was doing before was drawing a line on the ground plane. So I was kind of mm -hmm. drawing a line aligning with the volume and copying it up, and that's actually um, a little bit labor intensive. Yeah, just trimming it. You have a big trimming. Uh, so I made, a, I made a mistake sense. by going to L2 because I thought I was on the second floor. This is where I get confused. Actually, L1 is oh. our United States. In the United States, we would be second floor is L1. So let me see. So that's L1. Um, unit rotated, we are L and L1, volume turns off, I'll only use the volume when I need it. This is, um, I always channel Tyson when it comes to inferencing, because I want to always give Tyson credit for just kind of reminding me or teaching me how awesome inferencing is. I swear I haven't for, I don't know about you, anyone else out there, like kind of not use, I don't want to say use SketchUp wrong, but not know all of the cool tricks for like many, many, many years. And then finally you learn something like as simple as inferencing and you're like, oh wow, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Yeah, inferencing is definitely one of those things where it's like, what did I do? You know, here? you can get stuck in your way of doing stuff and then you like realize there's a much easier way just by locking a, you know, inference direction. Yeah, or whatever. The, uh, I love the way Tyson will draw. Like, so if you click here and you want to like go this direction, but you want to reference something, you just use the lock key. So now all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm locked to this direction, but I want to snap to this point, right? And that's the inference mm -hmm. locking. And I swear, I don't think I ever did that for like 10 years. 
So <laughs> it's like, how did you, how do I, how did I even get this job with SketchUp, by the way? I have no, I have no idea. Um, other than the fact that I'm just, I like, I enjoy it. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Um, this is the first one where we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new module for the garden wall. So I'm gonna pop over to, I have a reference image that shows this better. How's everyone doing in the chat today? Happy Friday, everyone. Doing great. Yeah, people from all over the place. Thanks for uh, being part of the uh, international, the worldwide SketchUp stream. So thanks for tuning in from wherever you are. Um, we just had Javier coming in from Peru. Hello. Um, yeah, Kegi saying he learns new things almost every day from the SketchUp channel, so that's great to hear. Oh, yeah. Well, and Kegi, you you are one of those. I'll give a shout out to Kegi for, because I think he watches every single one of our YouTube videos when it comes out, because I know, because he comments, and it's just like, you must you must know as much as us because you watch every single one of our videos. <laughs> you've got to be as good as us by now, Keggy. I mean, you've got to be ready to do the next live stream. Okay, um, I had that image. I had that image on there because I wanted to show you. This was actually a rendering that somebody else did, but it, it was nice because it was almost like because it's a rendering, it's simplifying it, right? It's kind of stripping away the real worldness, so I could just mm -hmm. focus on the modularity. Um, and you can see that there's these are the modules that actually they're not independent. They are sort of an extension of the unit below. So that's going to be tricky is, is sort of treating them as a component, but putting them on top of the of their unit so that it lines up and it feels like it's actually the roof of the unit. But but they're different because you'll notice that they, um, I don't know that it makes sense for me to treat them because they're on two different floors. So I'm kind of drawing them separately. Like I'm drawing the unit below and I'm drawing the sort of garden part above, but we'll see. Like I said, I'm going to apologize more than I normally do because I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, that's great. I like that's a cool design where the kind of the roof is, you know, the the garden of the next floor up. So if we're doing this proper, I would I would draw a line over here like this. I don't use guides, by the way. Um, I know people probably do, and they probably say I should, but I don't. I don't draw. I don't use guides at all. I don't like guides. I hate guides. Um, <laughs> Tell sorry. us how you really feel. Tell, that that is that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like, yeah. I feel like, um, it's okay. It's okay to have strong opinions about things. I, we just have to back it yeah, up. Totally. I just, they, they just confuse me. You know, it's just, it's, it's because I'm the one, it's me who doesn't understand them. It's not there. It's not anything wrong with guides. So Matt, don't take it personally. <laughs> I'm not a guides person either, but, uh, I know some people are and, uh, you know, more power to you. Well, yeah, that's why I said, that's why I made sure to speak, um, from just a, for yourself yeah i had that's why i said i i don't say that no one should use guides because that would be i think that would be wrong to say that i think that if it works for you <clears throat> i say that all the time works for you um do it mm -hmm. all right so that's that garden bed and then you can see that these don't line up perfectly which means that sort of the image below doesn't seem like it lines up with the garden bed and i'm sort of feel like i've already made drawn the, the units the modules so if I was really doing this proper, I would have actually looked at the garden beds above and then looked at the units below. And that is um, now that's going to come back to haunt me. So I'm just going to have to I'm just going to have to run with it at this point. So this is this little these are these little terraces. I'm going to go with one meter offset for that. Because they're like planters on top of Oops. them, right? Don't erase that. Yeah, they're like these planters. But like I said in that image, right? I showed you this image and the reason why I pulled this up because I'm doing a planter now. And the planters, you can see they're not offset. They don't overhang. They overhang here. I think there's a little vestibule probably because it rains a lot. And I say probably okay. because it does rain a lot. Um, so they probably do have like a little, um, if you look right here, there's a little overhang. You can tell by the, like a recession. So there is, so that's correct. What I'm doing here is correct. If I kind of tilt briefly and I'm going to switch over to my monochrome and turn my volume off. You can see right here, if I pull this up one meter, which I'm not gonna do yet because I'm gonna make it a component first. I'm gonna finish it. You can see that there's, um, let's see, shadows. No, I don't need to do shadows, you get it, you get it. You can see yeah, it. Okay, yeah. thanks. Moving on, save. Did you say, you haven't even saved, you haven't even told me to save this whole time. Wait, have you saved yet? I save every, save. I save every two minutes. Oh boy, I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that button handy then. You'll see if you you can't see my hand, but it actually my hand my left hand rests on Command S, 
and then it moves mm -hmm. when I use a shortcut. But it rests, its resting position is Command S. Um, smart. Yeah. Command S for smart. Yeah, we're on. We're on. We're doing all kinds of smart things today. Uh, so speaking of smart, I'm I'm going to think ahead, and I can see that this is a bit. This is a module here. So I'm going to trim this off here, and I'm going to need. I might need those lines. I'll leave those lines for right now. But I can see that this is lines up. This is like their property, and this is theirs. So what I want to see if mm -hmm. I can do, if I'm if I'm being smart, and if this works, I would actually come over here, and I would snap that, and I would line this up here, and do this. Okay, so that would be a module, right? So I, um, so if I component that, and I. Now, when you're on X-ray, pro tip, when you're in X-ray mode, it's really difficult not to accidentally click into something that's through it. So when I'm using X-ray mode, I actually hit return um, on the keyboard shortcut. So you can see if you look at my keycaster screen, I hit return or enter. And then what that does is it enters me into the component without double clicking. Because if I double click it, um, I actually often will in, end up into something below uh, because of the fact or something that shares. Like if it's Z fighting, like if you're drawing flat, you're going to double click into something below because of the... Your, it shares that that plane. Right, right. So I'm going to go up one, not 0. 0.5. Thank you. Who was that that remind me who who pointed that out? Uh, that, of course, was Randy. Randy. Thank you, Randy. Um, this is a bit funny, though. So um, that's OK, though. As long as this edge lines up, snaps. Yes, it does. That's why instead of drawing this twice and accidentally being off, I made a copy of the original and then made it unique, right? Because what I wanted to do was make sure that this unit these dimensions here and here, which is that set that four meter, I want to make sure that four meter was the same across um, all of the units because it because it's important because it it lines up with the terraces below. So I, you can see I'm using the reference images as a guide, but I'm not using them as fact. And so when if you go to SketchUp Campus and when I do my interior course, I say use the reference image as a guide and then enter real world dimensions. Make sure that you're snapping, you're inferencing, and you're snapping to things that are already in the model. Don't actually try to trace the image because chances are, especially when um, in the image, a rasterized image may have a, a line might be like 10 pixels wide. Where on that 10 pixels wide does that need to be? I don't know. I have no idea. So enter dimensions. Don't actually trace the image. Yeah, that's a good call and a good plug for SketchUp Campus, which SketchUp I just Campus. dropped the link to in the chat, learn.sketchup.com. Uh, whether you uh, are new to SketchUp and you want to learn the fundamentals and uh, you know have a good base, or you already are an intermediate and you have uh, more particular uh, interests of learning stuff from rendering Whoa. to, like you said, in commercial interior design or um, all kinds of different uh, learning, in-depth, comprehensive learning on learn.sketchup.com. So check it out and uh, hey, take some courses. They're all free, uh, just like everything here on YouTube. So what did I do? Yeah, we've got, well, that was a good, uh, thanks for the plug, Matt. We've got, um, we have some staff members, our friend Donovan, uh, for those of you that know Donovan, he is, uh, uh, he's usually my co-host and he right. is in AIA, which is in, remind me, Matt, is that in San Francisco today? San Francisco this he's year. He's in yeah. San Francisco, um, spreading the good uh, SketchUp gospel for all of our architecture friends up there at AIA and um, which is International Architects. Is that what? International Architects Association, is that AIA? American Institute of American Architects? American Institute, see? It's always, it's either institute or association, it's all the same. I should know this. The ASLA is American Society of Landscape Architects. So, oh yeah, there you go. Learn something new every day. So Good the, deal. the oh, you know what? Hey, Matt, I'm gonna ask yes. you your SketchUp knowledge. If I intersect, I don't have to turn my volume on, do I? If I right click this and say intersect with um, model, it'll intersect even though my volume is turned off. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it works with hidden geometry or if it's on a different uh, tag or anything. So oh. let's see. Right or no? I don't know. <laughs> okay, what did I do wrong? Okay, there it is. You can, see where, you can see where it's coming through. If I turn my X-ray off, you can see it's coming through here. And mm -hmm. if I triple click this and I say intersect with model, it does. And then if I turn it off and I say intersect faces with model, it didn't. I would have guessed the same guess, Matt. I would have said the same thing you did. What happened? Oh, maybe there? it works with hidden, but, works not, with hidden, with, but not turned off. With so if I hide this, if I hide it and then update this instead, I'll leave the tag on and then I'll triple click this and go intersect faces with model. No. What am I doing? Okay. 
Anyone who knows the, the correct answer to that, please let me know. I am going to, for right now, um, go ahead and leave it on. I'll turn it on when I need it. it. I'll either intersect or what might be just as easy is just to draw a line and snap it. Problem with drawing a line is I just don't want to make a mistake, so I might just say intersect with model. And I'll just group delete and good to go. Moving on. Uh, nice, yeah, learning something new. Problem. But yeah, Aaron, I feel like that's something Aaron uh, talks about in the live streams a lot. Trying to figure something out, it just takes more time than actually just doing it. And uh, I do want to say that we're about 10 minutes away from the halfway uh, point. So just want to give you a heads up on time there. Um, well, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know what to do. I think we knew. I think we knew that we were in for a bit of a, a pickle. This line should be here. That's what was that was threw me off. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to go on. Thanks for the, the warning. I did something wrong when I drew this volume line. Um, somehow it was intersecting with some some line work that I already had. But this is this is the edge that I want. So I'm just going to go like this. Well, guys, we don't like to do two parters, and the reason for that is because people don't they're just not interested. And we've seen from experience that they're just not that interested in seeing something two weeks in a row. So. Oh, don't don't give up now. You're feel, I feel in uh, found some defeated tone in your voice there. No, I think you're, and I was defeated. You're good to go. You're. I was defeated before we even started this thing. I was like, I was, um, I was hoping the 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 rainbow um, in the Orhos, uh, your rainbow journey, because I felt like doing oh. the circle with the tiled pieces, which has fifty two. I felt like I could have done that one in two hours. Oh no! Well, you're definitely all right. We're on a good track. I mean, you've spent the first 20 minutes talking about the reference images, so. All right, well then, you know what? I'm gonna take 20 extra minutes and then that way, and for those, that, because I'm gonna make up for that. I want two hours there. See, it's my stream. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. We don't need to take 20 extra minutes, but who knows? If we go over a little bit, that's okay. Um, okay, uh, I do have to say um, let's, that let's, I, let's move on. I do have to leave right at uh, the two hour mark, but uh, <laughs> probably should have told you that earlier, but uh, you can keep going. You don't need me. Um, well. There are a few, we do have a few, um, some of our regulars that I think may, may want to. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna t stop talking for a few minutes and just kind of focus. And then Matt, you, um, you, um, you do you. Okay, let's do it. Sure, yeah, go for it. So you're uh, just adding more detail to the garden level here? Yeah, I'm adding a floor. I just want right to, I, I just want to finish this off and I just kind of, yeah, if I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just, when I talk, it's when I, I can't talk in all at the same time. So, um, Hey dude, no need to apologize. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, I will keep the conversation going, uh, transom. Didn't you do some two parters in the past? Yeah, we have, but, uh, unfortunately they just never had the, uh, the same viewer numbers. So not as many people showed up to to watch the second part. Actually, when we very the very first uh, like modeling stream that we did, if anybody's a super OG, they remember SketchUp Live started as almost like a webinar, like a hour long kind of uh, walkthrough of particular stuff. And um, yeah, that wasn't really getting the the interest in people as much as just like seeing live modeling. So once we started doing live modeling, the very first one that Aaron did was the Millennium Falcon, which uh, is a, a hefty model. So there's a lot of detail on that uh, particular vehicle. And so that went for a four parter. It was a uh, very there's a lot. It's still on YouTube. You can still watch it, but um, long stream. Uh, but the numbers went down every week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we try to just stick to one one model per stream uh, or one stream per model, I should say. Um, that seems to work out pretty good. You know, you kind of that's uh, one thing that's, you know, any design has some kind of constraints. And uh, we typically do like a two hour time constraint, which is sort of an interesting challenge to see how much you can get done in that particular time. Um, you know, sometimes you get done everything you were hoping to, sometimes not, but um, it's an interesting challenge. But uh, but yeah, let's talk about some some details of this mountain dwellings, which is by Plot, P-L-O-T. Well, uh, here, I'll drop the 
Go ahead. Uh, it's it's by it's it's well I'm not sure I'm not sure who Plot is. Oh, plot is big plus JDS. Oh okay that's okay thanks I needed that explanation because I know that everyone knows big but I don't think everyone knows JDS so that was good yeah. I, maybe I cut you yeah, off. Yeah so I think it's explain that. No no it's good. Uh, so I think two architecture firms work together on this perhaps. Um, is what that means. I just dropped the link to uh, the article that I'm reading off but it has some really cool images of the of the building if you wanna. Check that out. Um, and it seems like one of the main uh, design challenges that they were trying to overcome in here is that, uh, like you mentioned in the beginning, there's all this parking that they needed, um, but they didn't want to do it the traditional way where you have the, you know, the structure right next to the building and kind of build it into the building and then have each um, each unit has like a parking space that you can walk right into uh right into the unit so i think that's why it's like at this angled thing where the parking the parking lot is angled and then you park and then your door is right uh right there so there's a lot of of parking underneath it but then so it's basically two-thirds parking and then one-third living space um and the 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 housing was kind of thought to be kind of like a hillside a terraced concrete hillside that's covered in housing uh, is sort of the inspiration behind it. Um, okay. uh, and so, uh, like you mentioned at the beginning, the, uh, the, all the, the dwellings, the windows and stuff are facing kind of southward to get that, uh, get that natural light and, um, and to get the nice views. That's why they did this kind of stepped design. Um, so, which I think is really cool. Um, okay. I'm calling this one. I think I'm done. Am I done on this one or did I miss something? This is L1. I think we're going to move on. So we're going to L2. We're going to see how far we get. Cool. All right. So thanks, Matt. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but I'm going to, I'm going to move on to, I'm going to move on to L2. L2 guy. Okay. You know, Matt, you've inspired me, man. You said it, you said, I'm going to see if we can do it. I think so much of this isn't set up. I tell, I teach when I, um, when I, I try to, remind everybody that like when we have setup uh it does take an awful long time in the beginning unfortunately i mean it is what it is, is what it is but like i think if you once you've done the setup it, it it should go faster like once you've once you've got it so so i'm going to turn my yeah, buildings totally. on now we're uh we're over here now which is the next we're on l did i get this right let's see make sure i'm going to make sure that i've got my units my my Okay, so this is it's the third one. Three. So L two. This is yep. two. Yeah. So if I go in here, this is two. This is three. So we're on three. So I want to make sure that if I turn two off, and that's three. Okay. Yeah. So turn section off. Turn that off. Yeah. A lot of, lot of staying organized. But wait a minute. That looks high to me. Why? What did I? Yeah. No. I see. I think you're on two, which is the third level. Ah, that's right. So this, this is what this is what confuses me. I get I confuse myself. As if metric wasn't already enough to, you know, gear switch. <laughs> doing the metric and then enough. doing eleven floors <laughs> and then doing it with like when they're on different floors, they have different floor system than we do. Yeah. That's Every why time I said... I'm in a hotel, I mix it up. I mean, hotels already make it hard enough with like garden level and ground level and you know, all this weird. Like just, I guess that's why they do the star in the elevator. Yeah, and there's like a shift to this too. I'm not sure how. If you look, there's like a shift. I'm sure that's a precise mm -hmm. number, but at this point, I'm just, I'm just gonna run with it. So let, see again now. Now as we go up, I can do times three, times five. Right now, I can start using a linear arrays. Um, these look a little bit off, and I'm gonna cheat it here because we're just. This is a conceptual model. No one's gonna build this, so I'm just gonna bring that out just a little bit. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this unit and go. Um, times. Are you sure that's not going to cause you more headaches in the future from scaling, scaling all those together? No. Well, I want to say no, I'm I not mean, sure, but I also want to say no, I don't think it's going to cause me any problems. Okay. That's a, aren't these I A1s different size than the other A1s now? Yes, but we're not building okay. it. So no one's actually going to check the square footage. It's going to look the same because it's only off by a tiny bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you do you. <laughs> Well, Somebody I mean, did mention earlier, should you make the components per like, you know, A1, B1 kind of thing so that you could, is that how you basically have it set up? 
Oh, I haven't named or them. like the different floor plans where you, yeah you didn't name them but I haven't named, the different I haven't floor named, plans I haven't named anything I'm just I'm just trying to see how many units I can stack in an hour <laughs> sure yeah no totally <laughs> and how many of these little garden plots that I can I can place in that same amount of time um Ebenezer says metric is bay what okay is that's 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 so what you say? young kids say. That's a young kid term for cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, that's cool. I like it. I can't. Uh, I can't say that things are bay, but um, I like it. Um, oh, also, speaking of, uh, well, not speaking of, but this is in <coughs> Denmark, Copenhagen, Denmark, is it not? Which is uh, home it to the Danish language. Is Bay Danish? I was looking up rad. Uh, well, I was looking up uh, common Danish phrases, uh, and this one is a very common one. Da ingen ko på is, which means there is no cow on the ice. Can you guess what that what that uh, saying means? Like how it would translate to English? I can't. Does anyone in the any of our listeners know? Yeah, what do you think in the chat? What is that ingen ko på is? There is no cow on the ice. What do you think that means? What's the what would be a comparable um, phrase? Michael says the coast is clear. Okay, okay. There's no cow on the ice. It's got to be like an old folk saying. I mean, I know that they get much snow, cold winters and stuff. So. Um... I don't know. Something that you think should be there that isn't there. I don't know what that would mean. I have to to hear what, what the answer is to that one. Yeah, don't worry. The lake isn't frozen? Okay. I guess that could mean that. The cow is underneath the water. The cow's swimming. Do cows swim? I would say probably no. But I don't know for sure. I'm no farmer. Who am I to say? Um, so what am I missing? Yes. Yeah, so what am I ahead. missing here? If I turn these, hang on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta think through this thing here. This can't be here. I copied this up. That can't be there because this has to step back. But if I go to, if I turn my L one on. Yeah, those those units are there, but these seem to step back really far. Did I miss a floor plan? There seems to be a gap between here and here. Oh, I'm gonna turn. Um, I don't know. Can you look at the uh, the aerial? Like, if you, uh, yeah, but the aerial should show it all as. I mean, it's all consistent. Uh, not Firefox. It's on my Chrome. Excuse me. Um, Chrome. There we go. Yeah, they're all consistent. So there, you start with this one here at the ground floor, and then you go up, up, up. There's no gaps. Oh, yeah. So, but then if you look at this floor plan here, this is my, this is what I put in, this is what I thought was L2. The only thing is, is if I actually put the wrong floor plan in the wrong place. This is why you folks, you know, this is why you measure twice and cut once. This is a classic. Because otherwise, what I what I what I have is a floor plan that that I have a missing floor plan, which is why I have a gap here. Which means that this this these need to go up one floor, and then I need to insert something in between those. Which I guess I could do in my own time. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. I mean, you still in. made this. This this floor is still useful. Yeah. So if um, I turn all that off, I mean, you can see. Make sure I don't have it. You can see that. Yeah. I mean, that would come up, and there'd be another row of units in because it needs to stack. Um, Sort of sequentially. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, yeah, just, nice. I'm gonna keep going. Just keep going. So this is. I mean, listen. I was. I was thinking about this while you were talking, Matt. Like, um, I don't know why you guys chose this one. You guys chose this one. I don't know why you chose this one. Because right, it's. Uh, it's just me. I'm just copying the same module over and over again. I wish there was a uh, a better way to do it, and I would be more than happy to take um, some advice at this point. But no, I think it looks what, cool. This is what we're doing. It, and just to hang up the phone on this uh, on this saying bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there is no cow on the ice. We got a couple of people who are right. 
Siavash and um, Ashwin, hmm. don't worry. Nothing to worry about. Everything's good, all good. And so that's what I have to say to you. Da ingen kopuis. Da ingen kopuisen. Okay. I know what happened. Yeah, of course you did. Da ingen kopuisen. Um, uh... Oh, that's funny. Oh. Um, no, I know what happened is um, I mixed my floor plans up, which is what I thought happened. I just didn't know like how to verify it. All right, then. That's all good. I think we're okay. Let's see if that fixed it. Um, I had a missing floor plan. This one, this is L2. So this one, you can see now um, L2 it has the units um, more forward. So that's why I was put. I, I was working back. I was working further back. So what I'm going to yes. do is just kind of for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and group these and pull those off to the side. Let's call that 115 meters, if you could help me remember that number, Matt. And then 115, let's... chat, you got me. Yep. Okay. Let's do this then. Let's keep going. We can do this. I think we can get at least the units in. And then um, 3.25. And then from there, um, I'll have to just kind of skin it probably on my own time. Do do so people good. like to when they model like I like to work in plan view. Is that boring? Like do they prefer to view it? You probably prefer to, probably like to see it in 3D because we're in this is SketchUp after all. Well, you're at least you're in perspective, right? Or no, you're in I'm in parallel, parallel projection. Times 5. Rough. Rough, yeah. So we'll um, make that. Well, yeah, no. I mean, I, I it makes sense when you're working with plans you want it to be like exact and you're not you're not mucking about with uh, perspective, but I'm used to. I'm just used to. Um, I mean, I think some of you out there may be used to working just when you're drafting. It's like when you're coming from an AutoCAD background. It's like you think about setting your model up in um, in 2D. And you're right, Matt. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe I'll redo those units. I'm going to I'll ignore the fact that this that this doesn't line up perfectly for right now. That's my artistic license because I'm just going to use the same module for now. And and I'll, why, why you know, there's that shift. The only thing I can think of, like, why does it shift here? Like, this looks, I know it's a, I think that, like, look, if I measure that, that's still four. And then if I measure this one, this must be a different unit. They say, they all say A1, though. But this, but if I measure this, um, oh, it shifts, though. So it's like, how? Unless I'm just slightly small, unless I'm probably just too small. Like when I did my first unit, I probably just did it a little bit smaller than it really was. And so that when you when you array it, by the time you get to the end of the row, you have a big gap. You don't see it when you only copy two, but when you copy six or seven, that gap gets bigger. So um, I'm just going to have to say that it should have been just maybe a little bit wider to begin with. But I can't really start. If I change it now, it's going to affect all of them because I'm using the same module. So I'm just going to have to yeah, accept no that. Well, like you said, the, the JPEGs shy. are just the JPEGs are just for reference, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is okay. just, and it's just, it's to get an idea. Do you know what I mean? It's just to kind of get like, what's the form look like? What's the kind of shape look like? How much can you do in two hours? There's a lot more than at what we're doing here than just, um, you know, saying, "Oh, I'm we're repeating this." I would not try to create construction documents or as-built drawings in two hours. By the way, that, folks, that's a bad idea. Yeah, well, good thing is you don't need to. Yeah. Um, Transom saying, hey, Eric, now that you have an array, why not just copy it and paste on every level and then modify for the ones that are different? Yeah, that would save me about 15 seconds to do another array. So we can, or 20 seconds. So let's do that. 20 seconds hey. times 11 floors. Hey, what's that? I don't, that's metric. I don't know how to convert that, but... Um, Lawrence says, anybody who works in parallel projection is a monster. Is a monster? I know. I know. You guys hate this, don't you? And Tyson's funny because he's like, because he knows I do this. And he's like, what do you, why, Eric, why do you do this? Why do you work in parallel projection? I don't know. I think it's because, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, that old versions of SketchUp have uh, view clipping, right? The clipping mm. when, when you have really big models. Uh, you get that you can't get close to an object. So I found that I, I, if I either work in parallel projection or if I go into perspective and I set my field of view, 
to one, which is basically as close as you can get to parallel projection, I could override view clipping. And I think that that's, I know that's less of an issue now as it used to be, but I'm still, um, I guess old habits die hard. I don't know. That's why I put the S on everything. I don't really work with cat files anymore very often, but I still S everything. Hey, you know, Yeah. do it the way you know. Um, yeah, because well, Tyson's weird too because he works in not that it's Tyson, weird. Tyson to work is in weird. No, Tyson, but he, I get he, it. Yeah, he's weird. He's a weird guy. <laughs> but he models with shadows on a lot of the times too. I'm like, that just seems like you're asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah. We all have our kind what? of our styles are a little are slightly different. Um, how we choose to kind of set up our um, intersect faces with model. Push this down. Or I can do go oh, yeah. delete. Do it your own way. Make your own template and uh, go have your, your own style. Own way. Wait, is it what's that? Is that um, no, Fleetwood Mac? Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, that's what's in my head right now. So that's what I'm modeling too. I'm gonna go my own way. Ah, uh, yes, that's what's playing in my head in your headphones right now. Right now. Aisha, hello from Jordan. Hey, thanks for joining. Oh. We are on the third floor of this building. We're and getting moving there. up. It's only eleven total. So and we're, we'll get there. Uh, let's see here. Make three elevens, that's uh, or three eleven. That's uh, that's, that's what's playing in your headphones next. Uh, next up on the queue is amber is the color of your energy. Oh, apparently you're a three eleven fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know their number one biggest hit, but <laughs> I uh, I skipped. Um, that is my that's my my genre from my age stand like my generation standpoint. But that wasn't. I was into eighties new wave. Um, at that during that time period and still am so I um, I kind of missed I kind of skipped like when sublime you weren't like the sublime yeah, yeah. Um, no and then what's some of the other bands that I'm thinking of that are kind of in that same genre I don't know I'll think of it but yeah I I, I didn't go that route so right or wrong Probably for the best yeah sorry folks just to each their own yep so Speaking of folks, where is everybody at right now? Where's our UK folks? Are they at home? It's a little bit later over there. Sometimes they're, where do you watch when they say you're watching from a pub? Like, how do you watch from a pub? How do you watch, like, like you watch on your phone? Do you watch, like, do you put it on the Jumbotron? Which would be awesome, by the way, if like they put live modeling on the, actually on like the, the TV, almost like a sport. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, that, that's why we need to bring some uh, some competition to it, you know, have somebody to root for. Um, we've, we've always talked about doing like, a, you know, a versus type live model. And maybe if the pub is our goal, maybe that's the way to go. What's going on here? What did I miss here? Did I, if I go up, there's this little space here, but how do you get into it? jump no <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't all... maybe it's yeah, just... maybe you don't well if i go back to no i don't want to go back to it. i just want to keep going maybe there's like an ac unit in there or something i could technically save myself some time by doing this whole row and then just letting my letting this bar um intersect and then clean it up later so i'd go 0.5 do you see what i'm doing like i already copied this module so in, in a way i'm trying to do this like you know um properly by creating these different segments but if i wanted to cheat it I could just come over here like that, and then I could merge and merge these together later. Because right now you can see this is a segment. This is a trimmed segment of this, and then now mm -hmm. I have this row here. But like, so if I turn off uh, my X-ray mode, you can see those two intersect with each other, and I would I would go in and clean that up later. But solid tools. Solid tools. Right. You're right. Are you solid, solid tools. tools for that? Yeah, I just don't even want to like at this point open a new tool palette. I just want to just I'm I'm in my my drafting mode. I'm in like the the mode. Um, I'm just in the manual mode. What's manual mode? What's a better name for that? Oh, got some reverse fo faces, folks. Got some reverse faces, fakes. Got some reverse fakes, <laughs> face, face. <laughs> it's Friday, guys. It's Friday, folks, out there, in case you didn't know. No, no problem. problem. <laughs> I am going to just take this part out here, and I'll just trim it here, and then that'll make me feel a little happier. My OCD will, will not feel so bad, and I'll just let those be two different pieces. And then I'll just group, I'll just do my group delete trick to get that out. Save. 
I actually didn't save for like the last eight minutes. Let's see how we're doing. I'm going to turn off my floor plan. Okay. Now this one Beautiful. I've already done, but this one needs to this one needs to come back. It needs to be pushed back because once we get to L3, um, where I'm going to put that one back in its place. It's going back in its place. I'm even gonna I'm not going to worry about my floors right now too. I'm just going to do the modules and then I'll come in if we have time and I'll close in the floors and I'll just seal those up because each one of those floor pads is unique as well. And so um, yeah, okay. Let's this one is not unique, so I need to make this one unique. Come over here. You can see it's a lot of this re repetitions. This this is why like, I think of modeling a little bit like meditation because when you get into the repetitious stuff, a lot of people want to automate this stuff. Oh, AI can do that and oh, extensions can do that. And I'm just like, or you can just treat it like a meditation session and just do the same thing over and over again for two hours. Listening to like, um, what do you call those? Are they singing bowls? Like where you go. Oh yeah, those like Tibetan. Tibetan, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. So I don't mind like copying and pasting and cutting like for two straight hours. Um, Here's something uh, thematic to that. Have you ever heard of a sound a sound bath? Yeah. Yeah, I had a friend. Well, it wasn't a friend. It was like a friend of a friend um, who, like her and her partner, like had a sound bath business. It's kind of like going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, you go to the, you go to like well, it's like like a, like a session. Yeah, uh, the one I went to, because I've only done done it once, I didn't really know what to expect, but it was in a yoga studio. And it was like, you know, you get down in like, what is that called? Shavasana, where you're just like laying down. Uh, and like you put a, a blindfold on. And then they have those kind of bowls. They have all this different stuff to make sounds with. But I couldn't see any of the stuff because you, know, you have the blindfold on. And they're walking around and they're... It's like some weird kind of transcendental, I don't know. I feel like I was put in like a trance almost. And uh, it was very weird. I, I didn't know what to expect at all. My wife did not care for it one bit. Uh, but it was it was like, I don't know. I felt like renewed, like refreshed. It was very interesting. I don't think I'd do it again, but uh, yeah. yeah. You're not selling it for me here. <laughs> It was it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not once okay, not once in a lifetime, but it was a unique experience that I I'm glad I had and I would recommend people do it. But anyways, they used those bowls and it was like it was intense, man. People th I thought it was gonna be like relaxing, but it was like it was like intense. Like my heart was beating. I was like, you know, like when you, you really? know when your senses are like blocked, like you couldn't see anything, all you can do is hear stuff. It's like you you know, you start to see things <laughs> just like i don't know i was like losing it almost but uh hey, it was an interesting experience sound bath check those out i'm not sure what to do here matt because if you if i turn off my floor plan you can see that the that if i'm trying to oh speaking of plot like because plot you said is, is is that jds and big yes i feel like i've lost the plot a little bit um, I feel like these are modules that are supposed to line up and then I get to these things and I'd be like, these modules don't line up in a theory, in, in, a, in a perfect world. And I'm going to switch back to my parallel projection because when you go perspective field of view one, sometimes you get this artifacting where you start to see lines through things. So I'm going to go back to my parallel projection. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like in, in, in a theory, it's like this line here, this line that I just drew should come out and it's like, that's the line. So it's like, but if I modify this, if I grab this and move this over, and then I grab this and move this over, it's like, did I just mess it up somewhere else? It's like one of those things where it's like you 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 correct it in one spot and you've you've ruined it somewhere else. Does that see? I just left an air gap there. Oh yeah. Like oh, maybe I just didn't move that. Maybe I just need to shift that one over. So, movies. There's some good ones coming out, folks. I know that we feel like we've been in a movie, I don't know, dry spell for a little while, but there's actually some some good ones that I'm excited um, to come out. Um, Jurassic Park, I just read an article that turns 30 years old um, this weekend. I saw, oh, yeah. I saw it in the theater in 1993. That would have made me 12 years old. Oh, do, mm -hmm. do the math. Who's doing the math? How do old the, is do, he? Do the math, folks. It's actually, that's pretty easy math. So. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so what movies... Are you interested to see? 
Well, I, 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 speaking of that, there was um, there was one that's actually called Jurassic Punk, and it was about the guy who like worked for I think ILM, and he was like this rebel, and he just kind of did whatever he wanted, and and it's this kind of his story. Um, I think that might be kind of interesting. And then the, the if you like Wes Anderson, he's got Asteroid City coming out, which I know Wes Anderson's a bit of an oddball, but and if you, but that one actually looks actually funny because. I like films that when they have cameos, like when you have like a hundred famous actors, but not every film does that, can do that, can pull that off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, oops, I kind of shifted this too far. That's why that's not lining up. I feel like, um, I feel like when you do it right, it's kind of fun. But when, I don't know, sometimes it just feels like it feels forced. So I don't like that. Phoned in kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I uh, I just got my tickets for Oppenheimer. Oh, that's the other one. Oh, my gosh. Who, wants, uh, who so, gets excited about seeing um, a movie about, you know, nuclear bombs? But it's going to be good. Oh, I do for sure. Yeah. Especially because uh, there's only 19 uh, theaters in the U.S. that are showing the 15 perf, like the true IMAX projection. Oh, no. And one of them is in my town. So I'm going to see it in as Nolan himself intended in uh full 70 millimeter 15 per projection so i'm pretty i'm pretty psyched for that on opening day so you hear that everyone we're gonna um matt is having a viewing party at his house and um so <laughs> i wish matt, I so i'm gonna go ahead and post i'm gonna go ahead and post his house. address in the chat <laughs> after this so everyone can just show up um for our friends from coming from europe i don't know if it's worth making the trip but if you're local um yeah, no, please do. And then actually the same day that Oppenheimer comes out, the Barbie movie comes out, yeah. which is thematic uh, because next week on SketchUp Live, same place, uh, same time next Friday, Aaron will be modeling the Barbie dream house uh, from the Barbie movie. But you haven't seen the images. It's wild because it's like a it's a real set, but it looks just like the Barbie toy uh I guess it's not a toy. What do you call it? Barbie? It's a Barbie. Yeah, it's Barbie. Uh, the Barbie dream house. Uh, but yeah, it's wild. He's going to be using match photo to, um, to model it. So check it out. A lot of pink. You got the pink line style. You're already one, uh, one week ahead of your time here because it's, there's going to be a lot of pink next week for sure. Um, I just laughed because you went from Oppenheimer to Barbie in one sentence. And I just feel like that's, you might be the first person to ever make that transition. So congratulations. <laughs> no, not at all. Hey, they're coming out the same day. Everyone's talking about the big verses of the summer is Oppenheimer versus Barbie. What's the big. Uh, yeah. I just feel like that's, that's one that, um, yeah, I think that's just a funny juxtaposition. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to um let's see this should be l2 not l3 because i switched my floors because remember i screwed up my floors so now what we're going to do is do a quick look at see where we're at i'm going to turn that on i'm going to go to my hidden line style i'm going and it's coming along it's coming along look at that it's gonna well now as it goes up i feel like it'll be uh easier and easier you have all the pre-made ones you just kind of copy and paste them and put them into place yeah, I've got some adjustments to do on this floor. That was the one that kind of screwed me up, but I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, I've got a bunch of pre-made components. I've going to like I'm going to try to do what Lauren says. I'm going to do the uh, I'm going to see if I can copy groups and just ship them over. It just feels like like they're the same module, but there seems to be a lot of small variations. So it's which I think is a good thing because it means that you get units that aren't exactly the same even though it's a module. So it's like variations on a theme, which is actually the hardest because it's like it's not drawing everything from scratch, but it's also not just copying and pasting modules. It's like copying a module and then making and then modifying and then copying the module and then modifying it. I don't know what's, yeah. e what's better, but I can see that this is actually a lot more work than um, I feel like it should be. But hey, hey. Well, that's what makes plot so interesting. They make it look so easy, but it's, uh, it's actually not. It's not. This is not easy, folks. This is why it's funny because some people will be like, oh, organic terrain modeling where you're working with high poly vegetation and scattering them in naturalistic ways with clumping grasses and under knowing like hundreds and thousands of species names. It's like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'll take that. I'll take that rather than, work, than like figuring out how to place um, these cubes. Ah, oh, that's another floor that's missing. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of floors in this thing. There's a lot of floors. The pro bigger problem is that the floors aren't where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to go down. 
3.25. Um, they're not where they're supposed to be. How did I, how did I mess this up so bad? I was being smart when I'm like, I was trying to be smart and I was like, oh, I'm gonna set this up before the stream. And then I, and then, and I like put the, I put them all in the right place. And then I got here and then I, I, I put a couple in the wrong order and now like the whole thing is thrown off. So, all right. Little did you know you're self-sabotaging uh, before the stream. Yeah, excuses, excuses. There isn't much time to spare. Uh, I've got your sound effects, Matt. So the other thing is that I, I'm, I'm curious to see if this would work, right? Now, these are components. So if I, t this is, this is, I'm trying to shortcut this process now a little bit. If I took this copy, if I copied this, and I just, for right now, I'm just going to select all instances. I'm going to group and hide it. You could, in theory, come into this group because they're components and paste it in place. Now, if I paste it in place, all the ones that are same, they're just going to paste in place. So now I don't actually have to, and somebody maybe should have told me this earlier. Um, the only problem with that is that it's going to, it's going to come into some places where it needs to be unique in which case it needs to be deleted. So like these end units, it doesn't work. Um, again, this is where it's like, I'm copying a module, but every time you come up against an end, you have a custom garden plot. So it's not gonna work. So I need to go back in and redraw um, those ones. And then these ones here, I don't even know why those ones are here. That's because those ones are part of a floor plan that I was missing. So I'm gonna group those and hide those. And we're just gonna skip over that. And I think maybe that might speed some things up a little bit. And I'm gonna leave these corner ones here and I'm just gonna adjust them at the end. So instead of adjusting the corners as I go, I'm just gonna copy all these modules up. And this might've been smarter. So I'm gonna copy all the modules with the planters inside of them and then come in and trim the edges off um, as time permits. I think modeling nice. is like, it's like you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, you put the peanut butter in there, you put the jelly, and then you trim off the uh, the crust. Yeah. And then you'll also see what I did when I copied in place. I copied it in place into the wrong component. So that's why it was shifted. That's why it was off to the side. Now, I don't know why this one here didn't get one. That must have been because um, that one, for some reason, I accidentally made unique. So if I copied that over, that one should look good. These ones are different units. They might not be different units. I'm not gonna worry about it. We are moving on up, as the Jeffersons say. Moving on up. So I'm gonna take all Very of good. these. Very good. Was that a good reference? I tried. Yeah. It's oh, hard yeah. to keep up with these guys, with Matt and Aaron and Jody. These guys are, it's, it is a, uh, it's a tough. Okay, so we're gonna go five. And then we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna copy these we're going to copy these up 3.5, 3.25, and we're just going to shift them back over. If I if I knew exactly what the number was, um, I could just I could just do that. So I'll just figure out what that what do you think that number is? That number should be shifting back exactly at 9.25, 9.25. Math kids. That's what I was going to say. And then I'm going to so shift this sure. over this way. See, this would be way smarter if I actually just did the math. Do the math, folks. Um, actually, I don't even need to do the math. One why? Because I already have this garden. I already have this plot here. So this is where Tyson's inferencing comes in. And I just snap right there. And that's at, uh-oh, it's a little bit off of two meters. That's at 2.005, but I'm gonna go run, I'm gonna run with that instead of two. Or I could just put it at two. So they do go up and they stagger. So now this actually should go a little bit faster now that I'm actually, actually figured out how to do this. So if I go to, um, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go to L6. I'm just going to go, um, in this case, I don't even want to turn my volume on because I told you I would trim everything. I would try to trim everything at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to L6 and L6 needs to come, is that L6? Yes, that's five, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm missing a floor plan. Do you think that means that these need to come down? You don't know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I don't want to say either way because uh, so now I don't want to be held responsible. I know this will be my I, Aaron's watching it at, um, at home and he's like, this is Eric's last live stream, by the way. So what was that number that we said we wanted to copy over? We were going to do 9.25 and then we were going to sh shift. Oh, no, I already did that. Um, and I'm going to shift over <laughs> to two. Oh, I think I'm watching on a, I'm watching on a delay. Uh, one, one, my one fifteen was right. It was just uh, it was it, it was it was right. Um, yeah. Turn that off. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. We're gonna copy this up. Copy that. We're gonna copy this up three point two five. 
I mean, I, I could I could copy each one, but I just feel like, I mean, I could copy them all, but I feel like I want to make sure that everything is like hitting where it's supposed to. Do you think this back unit needs to actually go back further? Like this back unit is the floor of the one? Do you know what I mean? You know what I'm, know, know what I'm saying? Um, like there's a gap here, but when I drew the, uh, yeah, there's a gap there. Is that the hallway? Do you think that's the hallway? So if uh, I went isn't into that underneath the ring or no? If I went into this unit here, and I and I just did a, a an extra group and snapped it there, then I've actually created yeah that's the hallway that's the corridor. So uh, fun fact you can actually it's the only building in uh, it's the only mixed use building in Denmark that you can actually access your unit you can park right next to your unit because of the staggered wow. parking you drive up the ramp and you park right here under the the unit above you. So then you just walk, you just walk straight to your unit. Amazing. How convenient is that? Well, it's pretty convenient. Okay. Um, you were talking about how hard it is to get around in car around there. I'm like, do most, I guess most people no, who I, live here would have a car, right? The whole point is that you have the car right next to your unit, right? No, it's not hard. It's not hard to get around. It's just that they're not prioritized like we do in the States. Um, you're, you are sort of encouraged to ride a bicycle and and the infrastructure supports that so um how come they don't make apartments with bike parking right next to your door oh they do yeah they have they oh they have they have like bicycle parking garages like the train stations they have like just like rows and rows and rows of racks so yeah um this one shifts over that one would shift over 2.5 no, oh, 2.5. And I got to lop off these end units here because that's a custom unit. Got to lop off that end unit. I liked having that unit there. Unfortunately, as the higher we go, the more we have to cut the end units off, which I didn't do on these because actually, no, I don't. Mm, yeah, no, that's that one I can modify. That, these ones I'm going to leave because I just have, I probably just have to trim them. And then we're getting closer, folks. Here we go. We are going up. We are at. L9. L9, yo. L9, yo. L9, yo. Three, you got El Nino this year, right? I don't know if they called it that. We had atmospheric rivers, which I don't really know the difference. But El Nino has to do with uh, ocean temperatures, right? That's a great question. What is our... We expect El Nino to continue into the winter. So, yeah. It is an El Nino this year. Are we get an El Nino this year? All right, good. That lines up. So I want to make sure that everything's snapping. That's the hardest part is just making sure everything is snapping where it's supposed to. All right. That one is a custom unit. That one's a custom unit. That one's a custom unit. In fact, that's a, that's a garden unit. That's one, two, three units on. We're at the penthouse level, by the way, because you probably get the best views in the city. Fancy. And how are we doing on time? 12.30. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. We can totally skin, we can totally do the whole parking garage and skin it and um, put materials and color it and render it in the next 30 minutes. So easy peasy. And make CDs too. And um, send it to layout. Yeah, we're gonna do this whole thing to scale. We're gonna annotate it. Just You guys have the, you guys have two or three, everyone at home, you guys have two or three days um, with me so I can get this document set out and sent to the, to the estimators. Okay. Uh, A simple answer is yes. The complex answer is, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You can do it. It'll just be a little complex. So we're on 10 now. So how many units are in, in the 10? Um, it's just the, the last two units. Oh, wow. The last two units. What I wouldn't give to live on the 10th floor of this building. Well, do you want to see? Oh, the 11th. Let's go see All what right. the view looks like in just a second. 9.25. And I want to shift this over. Um, I worked with this guy. Um, his name is Alan. I hope he doesn't mind if I shout him out. It was my first job at Landscape Architecture Internship where I was doing mostly CAD stuff. And he was funny because he was like one of the best CAD drafters I've ever met. So he was my inspiration. And he would about ha about several times a day, he would he would shout out to the office, over it. <laughs> 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 so I kind of in my head, whenever I'm doing some like a task like this, that's that's the voice that I hear. I hear Alan's voice saying, over it. Um, I'm not over it because I'm here with my favorite people, SketchUp fans, SketchUp community. All right. Um, so I might be over the repetition of this part.
part of it, but I'm not over being with you all today. I yeah. have a, well, I, that part is over mostly. I right? I screwed up here, so I feel like I have to. I think I was messed up my floor plans, and so, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that was worth an hour, but um, it was. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm digging. Cool. I'm digging the form. So what I want to do is um, figure out if we can do the volume shell. So if I just turn on my location snapshot for context, and I'll turn off my x-ray just to kind of give us an idea of where we are so that we can kind of see that this isn't just a bunch of forms. So what we would need to do is to kind of feel like we almost finished this in the next 30 minutes, I would want to take that volume that I did, and I want to go back if I flip back over here to my Chrome, I would feel like if we, I'm not gonna do windows or any, I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna do, actually it would be kind of cool because it would be easy if it's a component, you could just draw some glass. Sure. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. The thing that I would wanna do is that maybe at least just take that extruded volume and trim it because it looks like it's pretty easy. You just lift it up so you have ground floor retail and then you just follow, you just sort of offset from the edge of the stacked units. Now I know these don't read, this sort of reads as a solid facade, you know, because you're getting not just the front units like I drew, like you're gonna get the backside of the units. So it might take a little bit more work because right now, I don't know, maybe, maybe those, maybe those are there. Maybe, maybe that's, that's there. Why is this one so long? Yeah. Okay. Let me fix this one here. And then let me just go ahead and, and wrap it because once it's wrapped, it won't feel like these are floating. The other thing I could do is I could come over here and if it makes sense, we could also just to kind of feel like we're finishing this off a little bit. This looks like 0.75 meters by 0.75 meters. And I would make this a component. That's a structural column. And then what the funny thing about the structural column components is that in a way, if it's one component and you go all the way to the, if, if you have one component, instead of making them all unique, what you would do is just lift it up a little bit. And then if I arrayed this, and I won't do all of these, but I'll just do a few just because it kind of feels like maybe it won't be floating so much. So if I copy this mm -hmm. over, this is 10 meters. So this is a 10 by 10 grid. I turn that off and I copy, um, let's do this as an array. Um, that'll make it a little bit easier. Mm, was that 10 also? That looked less than 10. Yep, that was less than 10, 7.5. But if you, um, assuming that this is a 10 meter grid, you can just pull, copy those, copy that. Copy that. Copy that, that would be at, that's not at 10 either. See, this is the thing, it's like, it, it should be regular, but you know, because of parking stalls are kind of weird dimensions, this is now 9.25. Well, what's the next one? Like, this is why it's slow for me because it's, Oh, that is 92. Okay, that's 92.9.25. So this is times, because I want to do a linear array, <clears throat> which I can do there, which is great. So mm -hmm. in this case, I'm not going to do all of these, but I just wanted to say like, in this case, what you could do, and you may, some people may or may, may frown upon this, but you could just kind of lift these up using the scale tool. So the nice thing about this is that it's a non, um, it's essentially a non-uniform scale. So this is what I call a stretch. So um, it's a, or it's a uniform scale along just the z-axis. So if you wanted to, you could come in if, for example, if I wanted to give this a color or if I wanted to like add some articulation to it, I can do it to all of them, but each, but then you won't have this problem where these are sticking up out of the units, in which case that um, wouldn't be the case. You'd want to bring, it, bring that back down. So by using this, this scale, this stretchy stretch, is there one there? There shouldn't be one there. I think there's one and I guess you could use all the ones in the same row and scale them all at once too, right? Uh, yeah, that would be smart. Yeah, see, work smart, not hard. That's what the um, that's kind of the 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 story that I like to tell. Um, you could take all of them in a row, and then again, if you wanted to, you could set them up as a single component, make them unique, and then um, this would be this would be structural column level. 10 or whatever you'd want to call that up to level nine, in which case that's okay because then all of the level nine columns would be their own component. Or if you're kind of lazy like me, um, you just you just stretch them. 
I think sure. I'm, yeah, I'm, that, I'm that a lazy, works for a live stream. Yeah, so I, that's my YouTube channel. When I start one, it's the Lazy Modeler. And the reason why is because in landscape, you're not supposed to be so precise. You know what I mean? Like things are kind of placed here and you kind of want it there and things are supposed to be loose. And I think I model way looser than um, maybe some people, maybe than I should because. And for this one and for all of you who have been waiting for this moment, drum roll, Matt. Oh, you don't have a drum roll sound effect? <laughs> I don't have a drum roll sound effect. <laughs> I'm going to switch to have this one. Oh, that's not going to do it. Okay, that's not going to work. I'm going to switch to, um, I'm going to switch to pers we have perspective. perspective. Got we, have, your sound. we have perspective. Yes. Houston, we have perspective. Okay, so let me figure um, out. I do, uh, this is the 20 minute uh, warning here. So decide what you want to, what you want to do with the last 20 minutes here. Um, yeah, what do I want to do? Trim the outside ones, or well, I kind of want to fill the holes. Like I want to figure out. I want to go to. I want to see if in just a few minutes what happened here. I felt like I did this right. Do you see that? Right. If you look at this floor. Like, um, but this one can't be here. This can't be here. So this can't be there either. So did I miss an? I must have missed an entire floor. Did I do that again? It looks like all those top ones are there. There just should be one in between those two. But there, but, but there. If I hide this, you're right. If I hide, no. In this one here, there's no, there's no. If I turn my buildings off, there isn't one here. Oh yeah. And did I just get the? Did I put the floor plans in wrong? Look, maybe did I skip a? Oh, wait, this one. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna yes. have to leave it. I'm gonna have to leave it. I'm gonna have to leave it at this That's point. That's okay. I'm gonna this is your it. building. This isn't uh, plot building. Yeah. You know? But I was like so excited to like. I don't know. I'm so excited going into this. Um, now I'm just. I'm. I don't want to disappoint my fans. I don't want to disappoint my audience out there. I feel like they have. We have high expectations for these streams. Okay, I say that every single time, by the way. So anyone who knows, no, um, the audience is really happy. They uh, enjoyed seeing everything that you did, including where you're at right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a line. I'm just going to kind of fake fake this. I'm going to draw a line from this corner to. I think I'm just going to pull an edge, and I'm going to I'm going to have to sort of adjust this, but I'm. I want to. I want a line that I can. I kind of want to see what that. I want to go from edge to edge here. See, this is here's why I don't do it. Like, um, and Aaron's got a space mouse, so he'd probably say, "Well, that's not a problem with the space mouse." But for me, I have a problem sometimes with zooming. So when I go parallel projections, because I can zoom, and sometimes in in per, um, perspective, it kind of gives me it can give me trouble. Sometimes my zoom slows down depending on the angle or how far I'm trying to go. So what I want to do oh, is Oh, like get, what you're, because you're, you're, it's context based, like depending yeah, on where your cursor is on, it'll zoom into something yeah. different. Yeah, so this one here, I feel like um, this corner, let's look and see what's happening with this corner. So if I pop over here, I have to, because remember it rounds, it turns the corner. So this goes, if I pop down to the street level, it, the, it, it really starts, the, it starts from, I'm going to, I know that this sort of starts what looks like maybe five or maybe a couple of meters back. But for sake of ease, I'm just going to kind of start this from the, this corner and pull this up. And then I want to lift up um, the ground floor, which is also the parking garage entrance. And then these these sort of stacks minus the um, walkways with the fencing ought to just reveal themselves. So we'll see if we can do that. Sure. Yeah. OK, so this would be that this would be uh location snapshot on save so this is that corner that i just looked at um this is the street side so this is the main street and then this is the street that takes you into the parking garage so that's actually coming in you come in here that's right here so this is the one where i said this one starts it starts from this corner and then it goes up no it has to start from this corner doesn't it and then you come yeah. in. Yeah, you come in, you come in here, you turn this corner because I remember that was the notch. So it starts from this corner. And then if I kind of drew. See, I didn't finish these end units. So that kind of makes it hard. I just have to draw to this unit because that's the only one that I drew properly. And then I just have to use inferencing to kind of extend that line. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab the one that I've already done. And I'm going to pull back to here. And I know that that's not. 
that is going to be kind of weird, but that's okay. So what I want to do is trim. I want to get rid of this part of the volume, if I can, because I don't want this. That volume was that volume. I might, you know, it might actually be good to save this. In fact, I'm going to save. I don't like to get rid of stuff. I'm going to group it. Save, save. <laughs> Why? I, I do save. Um, yeah, you want to save that piece. Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't right. mean to play that, it twice. Right? Oh, no, no. I thought you were telling me to save, and I did I did save. So what I want to do here is um, I do have some cleanup to do to get these sort of end units, sort of because they're all the custom units. And then I have to take, oh, because this is a, oh, this is why you make it as a component. Because I was doing this on an upper level floor plan, and that's going to go all the way actually to the basement level. So what I want to do is bring that all the way down to ground floor, and that's easy peasy. Um, and those ones I stretched, so I'll leave those. So now this one though, this doesn't actually touch the bottom of these units here. So if you look at this side, it doesn't actually touch these units. And then the other thing I wanna do is take this, it does probably come in and I'm not exactly sure where, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab that side and then just inference this here. Oh, not like that. There we go. Feels like feels a little bit finished. Feels a little bit more finished. Yeah. So the, pro so the problem is here is that I want to bring this down, um, and I don't know how far. So I'm just going to kind of guess that there's a little bit of an air gap. Let's go with two meters. That's six feet. So that sounds good. That sounds like a nice number. And then and then this one I, I can't tell because I don't have that unit. But I'm going to go ahead and pull that down the same six feet. So it has sort of, sorry, not six meters. Uh, two. And then this should have been a straight line because that's a straight line, but I used it. I snapped onto this corner, so that's why I created a double line. All right. So. So. What do we? Where do we want to go? Where do we want to go from here? What do, What do our friends at home um, think? Because it's clearly not done. I can thicken this. I can use um, joint push pull to give this a thickness. I'll do that while you guys are thinking. So. Sure. Home. Yeah. Do and then, uh, so what are the options? Do you think? Do you? Well, can I can clean up. Level? I can clean up these custom corners. The ones. These are all the units that don't have um, that got up against the edge that I just left. Or I could um, create uh, something that represents kind of the garage entrance. Or I could at least. I should at least lift this up because I don't know if it actually goes around the backside or not. So I'm going to copy this up. And what would be um, three, it's probably going to be about three meters, although it doesn't look, it looks pretty shallow, but I might just say three. And so what I want to do is I want to give this a thickness. So I want to take this one, this part, and group it separately, save it, and then I want to see if this works. I'm going to come over here to Tools, Fredo, Joint Push Pull, and I'm going to go, I'm going to Joint Push Pull it. Thank you, Fredo, for a joint push pull. I'm going to come out. I'm going to give that not a meter because that's too much. I'm going to give it a half a meter because it's got to have at least like some structural, some thickness to it. And that's a way I can push yeah. pull all of these at the same time without having to go in and connect those faces and clean that up. The other options we can find, I probably can't find an image, unfortunately, of the, let me just, let me make this white. I don't like to see reverse faces. So I could go in and reverse them or I could just paint everything white. Yeah, this floor bugs me. Like it bugs me that I, I have a missing floor here. So even if I just filled this in with, even if I just filled this in for right now and then went in and fixed it later. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, just to kind of feel like, cause I know that, um, yeah, just and I want, and then, and then I want to kind of Maybe just pull this out. And then this one would go, it would have to find this intersection or intersect it with model, push that out. Yeah, so this whole edge needs to be, this whole edge needs to be cleaned up because I messed up on that one. But, uh, and then these corners, these corner units need to be trimmed so that they, they don't just float like that. Um, or we can call it, or we can do the little statue out, the little sculpture out front. So if we go to the, um, let's see here, if we go here, whoops, not there. Um, if we go here, this is kind of funny. Like urban design is funny, you know what I mean? Because like you've got this crazy architectural building and then like the plaza is these, just these cubes. I'm sure there's a metaphor and here's your bike parking, by the way, Matt, in case you're wondering, you can see that you've got um, 
people have can take bikes up the ramp to their units or they can park them in corrals that are covered or they can park them in corrals that are not. And because so many people have bikes, you see all kinds of different bike racks there, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, let's build a bike rack and put some mm. cubes in it. And then I wanted to give this color. I wanted to give the underside of these color, but I don't really know how to do that because they're all components. So the only way to do that would be to, I mean, almost go in to this, at least the edge unit, paste that in place and then pull something down. Um, and I don't know how thick that would be, but if you wanted to um, uh, pull it just to give it a thickness, so I'm gonna say 0.5, no, 0.25. And then what I would do is come over here and then grab, because you remember I had this, when I started, I put in this, I put in all this stuff here. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I guess this is kind of what I'd like to do with it. And I'm gonna change my field of view for this to something wider, like 60. And because I'm gonna be looking underneath the building, so I could grab that and make that green. And uh, if I wanted to do the same thing, I would come in just to that backside. And I would probably already need to push pull this and push pull this. Now, when we look at the photo, is there a thickness on that? Or is it, if you look at the, the is there, no, it just goes stainless steel. So there's no green edge on this yeah. side. It's just straight steel and then, or aluminum, and then it, the green starts underneath that. So what mm -hmm. I would do here is, make that green and then I think the corner turns green so if you guys will humor me for a minute I will do that I will just pop some color in this oh, yeah and the the nice thing too is that that color is carried throughout the entire parking structure so you know if you park on red you know then you can remember where your car is at yeah I mean if you live there obviously you know but um so for this yeah, for this part, I'm going to, yeah, let's do this. Let's just take that down 0.25. And then I don't know if, what the best way to do this is, but I'm just going to come over here, copy those, paste them in place. I'm really just at this point just trying to get something that I can color, but I don't want to color the unit itself. So I know this is really not the way to do it, but I'm we're, we've only got a few minutes left. So See, this is where, ah, this is where the zooming, I want to do it in perspective. This is where I need to learn to do a space mouse because I want to do it, I want to do it in perspective, but the zooming is a little bit tricky. You're just not used to if I did, I it, prefer the zooming that way because then I can, if you're you know super in close or if you're far out, you can control how much you're zooming. But I get what you're saying. If you're used to going a set amount every time you click the wheel forward or whatever. Yeah, and if these are modules, I may be able to, if this is a module, then I may be able to, explode this, make this, um, not this, that should have been grouped separately. Sticky geometry, folks. It's gonna stick. Mm. What I might be able to do is just group that, not make it a component. I could make it a component. And then, so I'm gonna get rid of this one. You'll see why. And then I'll copy this if this works. But that's like an angled one, right? Is it? Or no? The edge is like falls along that angle of the. Oh yeah, that's an angle one. So that one. Are you saying you want to? Be, yeah, no, yeah. no, you're right. That one needs to be unique. So 0.25. That one needs to be unique. So what I would do is I'd come in here to this one, and I would say that I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to paste that in place. Make it a component. Make it a component. Because I'm going to paste. I'm going to paint the outside of it. I'm going to give, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to give that a thickness, 0.25. I could use joint push pull or not, 0.25. And if I don't like that edge, I could just hide it. No, I don't want to hide the face. I could just hide the edge. No, that doesn't work because there's already an edge there. So I'll leave the edge. Um, I'm just going to pull this out, 0.25. And then, and then you, you can't paint the outside of the face because what it's going to do is it's going to paint everything. So in this case, I wouldn't want to make this a component I would want to just make it a group because what I'm going to do is I'll go into it and I'm just going to sample. I'm going to sample there and I'm going to grab paint there and there. And then, so let's go ahead and just copy this one. I hope that if these modules are in the same place, I can just copy those and just go times seven. And they don't all line up because I didn't finish those end units, right? So I'm only going to do the couple that I have the end units for. So I'm going to grab that color and I'm going to come over here and grab this color. 
and we're coming up on our time so I'm just gonna paste some color and then I'm gonna sort of get a nice uh, look and view and I like it we're gonna call it in just a couple minutes so had it good is that Swedish for or is that Danish for all the best I was gonna say um, it's Danish for get the show on the road <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's this one. Okay, let's get the let's make this one magenta, which is right here, and then there's going to be um, this next one is purple. Purple. How do you say purple in Danish? Purple. Chat, help me out. And this last one, these units. I'm going to have to move these over. Because these actually aren't where they're supposed to be. So let's just try moving those over and see what that does, if that's correct. And, oh, interesting. I got that whole edge, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna... All right, and then let's do that last one. Let's do blue because that completes it. That's, com that's all the colors that I could count, all the ones that I could see. So let's grab that blue right there. And I don't know, that color is so important to the design. And I did go inside the parking garage, which you may or may not, you may or may not supposed to be in, in there, but I did. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Is it cool? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's turn my shell back on. I'm going to turn my location snapshot on. I'm going to switch my perspective to field of view 50, which is sort of natural for the eye. I'm going to zoom extents. I'm going to, oh, that's okay. I'm going to turn my shadow settings on so I can turn some shadows. And then we're going to play some music here in just a minute. Um, shadows on. Okay. Yeah, I would have liked to got, I would have liked to have gotten some materials. Um, I would have liked to have gotten some materials in there. Well, so there's the you can see the color from that side, but you can't see it from this side. So that's the trick of the of the uh, mountain dwellings, I guess. You know, it's got more than one side. Okay. Well, everyone, I'm going to with three minutes to go. I'm going to say, well, not done. I'm going to say that we. Uh, we, with your help, uh, we did it. Okay? I'm going to say we did it. So, Bjarke, if you're out there watching right now, um, you know, give me a call. You know, we'll share tips. We'll do lunch. Okay? Next time I'm in Denmark, we'll hang out. We'll chill. I didn't see you this time. Sorry, my bad. I was busy um, with the Hollygon, with the developers. And uh, we'll do, yeah, we'll do it again next time. So, awesome work. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us today and just watching me suffer through this. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, learned a few th tricks myself today, and I also learned that you know architecture is, um, yeah, it's 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 tough. It's hard. You, this looks like it's a repeating building, and it's just a module copied over again. But it, there's there's more to it than that. So Matt, anything you want to say? Any reminders? Uh, who's up next week? How do you want to take us out? Yes, uh, I do want to say I will echo everyone in the chat saying you did a great job. So nice stream. Good job by you. Um, and next week we'll have Aaron modeling the Barbie dream house for oh, yeah, the new right. Barbie movie uh, with match photo. So come and uh, see that next week. A lot of good tips on match photo and a lot of pink. So of course you got to see that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Like I said, hey, great job, man. Another great stream in the books. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, maybe when I have time, time, I'll finish this model, post it to 3D Warehouse. If, uh, if so, keep an eye out for it. And um, until then, have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week. And before I let you go, if you're not subscribed already to YouTube, do that right now. We're so close to that 500,000 mark, and we're going to throw, uh, we'll do something special for our 5,000 um, subscriber live stream. I don't know what that is yet, but it'll be fun to celebrate with you. So do that, and we will see you next week. Thank you so much. Ready Have a great put, weekend. Ready to put my music on? Let's do this. Go. Do it. <laughs> now. <laughs>